risk indicators are somehow at the backbone of, uh, of the data cross tool. Uh, the rationale here is that it is possible to uh, early detect and identify high risk entities based on a number of uh, anomalies uh, among firms. Um, this is uh, nothing new in a way. Uh, the risk based approach is at the center of the AML regime, uh, but somehow it is very important not only for uh, AML obliged entities such as bank, but also for public authorities because um, resources sometimes are lacking and therefore there is the need to focus only on high risk situation and also there is information overload. So there is the need to orient among this amount of information. The risk indicator cover a number of risk dimensions. Uh, for example, ownership and governance. We look at unjustified ownership complexity at links with very uh, opaque uh, uh, legal arrangements, uh, at anomalous ownership or shareholding patterns. We look at exposure of firm, of their owners, of their individuals to our high risk jurisdiction, but also high risk municipalities. And in that sense, it is uh, worth to mention that. Uh, the data cross tool in a way was used to support the impact uh, group for identifying uh, um, high risk entities owned by um, uh, certain Italian uh, uh, criminal organization uh, in Europe. Um, uh, management anomalies, including anomalous board rotation composition, the existence of special function and also financial anomalies. Uh, signals at accounting level of shell company activity, anomalous growth rates, and a number of other indicators. Political exposures, and among them, uh, PEPs, but also local administrators. So Data Trust collected data on local administrators and council members in a number of uh, selected European member states. Negative events, sanction, previous corruption of money laundering charges or evidence, um, mentioning leaks, uh, but also countermeasures, which can mitigate somehow the inherent risk of uh, entities. Um, one may say uh, that these are too many, but actually the point is that there is no one single universally valid indicator which could work to identify high-risk firm. Indicators have to be many, have to be combined with the skills of the users and to be put in context. Um, this is uh, the lessons that we learn from our research. So anomaly indicators and risk factors are uh, identified on the basis of our studies, but also, as said, um, indicated by the data across uh, public authorities. They go through an operationalization process, they are they become risk indicator, and then they are empirically validated. What does it mean? That they are actually uh, tested to check whether they are able to predict or to identify firms which in fact were uh, involved in crimes. And this is something which characterizes this project and our research, scientific research uh, track record. Uh, once validated, they are engineered in the meaning that uh, they go through the data cross services in the tool or the API or in the data feed. And they are institutionally validated in the sense that they are then employed in the uh, use cases, as we will see uh, in few uh, in few minutes. One uh, has to say that uh, the uh, risk indicator, and generally speaking, the data cross approach is not only helpful for micro-level investigative purposes for asset tracing, risk assessment, but also at macro-level application. So, for assessing the risk of territories of sectors for monitoring trends and evolution or identify hotspots. And I show you just two um, applications at this level. One, as you may, you may have seen, uh, is the applications that was done to identify certain anomalies across firms all over Europe, across European regions. And I do not want to go into detail, but you can see them on the data cross website. Um, a second application is even at regional level. So the data cross approach and indicators were used to map uh, uh, the high risk firms in a region like Lombardy region, and by uh, combining uh, uh, different indicators into profiles uh, of firms, because as said, this needs to be context specific. And here you can see, for example, a certain profile of them how they distribute in the space and how they evolve over time. 